My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel passage, things are heating up between Jesus and the Jewish authorities after his triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. In this discourse, these groups, the, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, they come, and we already know that the gospel writer has already told us that they plan to kill him. So we already know that they're hostile. But now they challenge him, by what authority do you do these things? Of course, they mean by these things, his entry into Jerusalem, what's just happened, his cleansing of the temple, all that he's said and done. They want to point out that they, the authorities, had not authorized any of this. So they challenge, by whose authority? Jesus, in great rabbinic form, offers a counter question and says, answer me. If you can answer this for me, I will answer your question and ask them a question about the origin of the baptism of John the Baptist. Now, we see the debate they have amongst themselves. And in this, they're left knowing that they're in a corner they do not want to answer. And so they say, we don't know. And therefore, Jesus refuses to answer their question. But it's very telling that both by the initial demand, by whose authority and the evasive answer, uh, we don't know. It has nothing to do with truth. Neither of the, the, the first question is about power. We challenge your authority. And the second question, we don't know. That's a lie. It's not, it's not a matter of truth. They are politically calculating how to work the situation to their advantage. My brothers and sisters, all too often, this line of thinking creeps into us as individuals or into the church, as instead of seeking the truth to be enlightened by God and his will and what he has revealed to us in sacred scripture and divine revelation, the sacred tradition of the church, the teaching of the magisterium, we seek to instead contest the authority of God on certain questions so that we can reshape them either to our own political advantage or to justify a change in teaching or behavior, the places where we don't like what the Lord has to say, we look for a way to challenge it, to reinterpret, to weasel our way out of it. We are the ones that are called to change. God is not required to change. God does not change. He is God. But we too often seek to change God, or at least to change his word, to suit our likes, our wants, our desires, when instead God is challenging us. Answer me. That answer me is very evocative because it comes from uh, the book, I believe the book of Micah, uh, but it comes out on Good Friday uh, in the reproaches, the text sung during the, the adoration of the cross. When Jesus, when the, when the Lord basically says, my people, what have I done to you to deserve this? And so now we hear today, as they threaten, as they persecute Jesus, as they reject him, and he instead comes back and says, answer me. The Lord speaks to us. I have presented to you my truth. I ask you to follow me. I promise you the best that you can imagine if you will just submit to my yoke and follow me. But when we don't, then we must answer the question, why? Answer me. Why do you reject me? Why will you not listen? Why will you not follow? My brothers and sisters in Christ, that is not a question we want to have to answer. Instead, may we listen with open ears, open hearts, and the humility to allow the Lord to change us. May God bless you all.